so for this week we got a couple few things to talk about as always i am the gentleman snark i'm sinister sheep and i am black flag so right off the bat we're going to start off with that new ps4 game spider-man for the ps4 uh so sinister sheep you want to start us off with that so is it for the ps4 or not <laughs> so it says Spider-Man PS4. I know it, it's so. technically called Marvel Spider-Man, but everyone's been calling it Spider-Man PS4. Uh, so far, I've I'm almost done with the story, and spoilers. It's, nah, I'm gonna try to keep spoilers to a minimum. It's really good. The story's definitely uh, intriguing, and like sometimes with these games, like I don't care about the story, so I'll drown it out with like a YouTube video or like music or something like that. But the story actually kept me hooked on. And the soundtrack for the game is actually very good. It makes you feel very... I'm going to try not to be IGN and not say it makes you feel like Spider-Man, but it makes you feel like... You're more You're you're, you're more you're in, in a, the game. Yeah. So Spider-Man. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, fuck. Yes. Yes, technically. Um, but the only problem I have with it is the swinging. Now, the swinging is fun. But all you really do is hold R2 and move forward, and basically that's that's the gist of it. So it's not individual, it's not like, um, individual web slings. Right, and I like that version better, which is in the uh, Spider-Man 2 movie game, which uh, everyone says is the best Spider-Man game. And I still think it is, even though this game came out, and there's so much more to do, but... Personally, just I think it's mostly from blind nostalgia, from uh, me personally. Yeah, no, I understand um, that 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 personally for me was the best uh, swinging mechanic for any. Yeah, Spider yeah, Man it's games. it's definitely got better swinging mechanics and jumping mechanics, like how you can charge your jump in the second one and then launch. You can't really do that here. Um, you just jump and then swinging is your jumping phase. What you're describing actually sounds more like the mechanic, uh, similar to the mechanic of the actual the first Spider-Man game from the based off the first movie. Which yeah, was, but instead, he you, instead, <laughs> instead you you have you you have to move forward. This in this one, you you, you well, press you could you could go in any direction. All you do is just hold R two, and then it does it does it for you. Well, no, that's the same mechanic that that the first Spider Man did. Okay. Uh, until uh, that that sounds like a, and the webs came out of nowhere. Yeah, the, yeah. It, they didn't even they just they, they can go into the sky. They had it? someone told me they had a theory where it's just a helicarrier that's just hovering above. And I'm like, just admit it's a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that's um, that's how the kind of the first con- and even here's the thing: the first game wasn't even very, it wasn't bad. It's just you know, it was kind not of not as good as the second. No, it was their first uh, attempt at like like a PS2 modern yeah, ca- and, interpretation and a of first a, really good open world. Like that open world is actually very solid. Yeah, so for Sp- um, Spider-Man Two introduced a lot of like I will the, say the. Best mechanics. the even though I enjoy the swinging in uh, the second movie version, this one has is much faster and much better momentum. I would say to get across, like in the uh, in the second movie uh, video game. I hate that we have to call it that, but uh, you know where you have to run across the uh, buildings, but it only lets you do it a certain like amount of time before it resets into crawling animation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this one, it just lets you run up and the thing with like unlimited time and that's fine like that's really that's great that, that, that's, <laughs> that's actually, way better that's actually that's really cool that's really cool um also you can like so there's little icons and you can shoot out two webs and like pull yourself onto that item so like for stealth section say you're on the ground and you want to get on a lamppost you just press l2 and r2 and it launches you over there you know what I mean? It, 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 and it, it makes you jump on there. Basically. It indicates when you you're allowed to do that and when yep, you're not. Yep, yep. It's like a white little circle they, or whatever. They did have a similar mechanic in the the movie, the second and third movie game. Yeah. But you could you had to be in the right spot. They didn't indicate where you could do that. Yep, so yep. that's that's pretty good. I, yep. That's pretty cool. Um, and stealth missions are good. They're very easy compared to like say Arkham Asylum and stuff. They're it's like a cakewalk basically. Mm. Um, especially if you get upgrade everything, then it's like the easiest thing you could possibly do. How are the do. bosses? Bosses are actually great. Um, really good, really simple though, really easy until you get toward the end where you have to face. So basically, spoilers, um, at toward the very end of the movie, the Sinister Six is formed and you have to fight them. 
But instead of fighting them one on one, you fight two of them at the same time. So one of them is Scorpion versus Rhino, and basically Scorpion shoots you with his like acid from a long distance, and Rhino runs you over. So you have to manage both of them at the same time. That was the most difficult one so far. Mister Negative is a cakewalk. He's he's so easy. He's the main baddie. Don't um, be so negative about it. Kill yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then the other one is Electro and uh, uh, what is it? oh uh, Vulture. Uh, that one was fairly easy. Uh, all you have to do is just shoot webs at Electro, and he's pretty much done. And then you just have to dodge and uh, counter attack Vulture, and then you're all set. So Gohan would die. But but they're fun fights. They're fun fights. They're just a little too easy for my taste. Um, but like where the difficulty really lies is when they throw a whole bunch of enemies at you, but not just like any enemies, like a random sort of enemies. So like there's a muscle type where there's a specific way to take that individual down, but then a whole bunch of other like basic ones are punching you at the same time. So you have to like manage everything. And it's not exactly, it's, it's pretty much like the Arkham Asylum combat and Arkham City combat, but, uh, you have more gadgets and stuff and you can like easily like perform it, it, it has more combos whereas arkham is just like it's it's a great mechanic but it's dodge hit dodge hit whereas this one you have mo like a move list basically um where you could perform different uh moves and stuff but uh overall i like the experience oh and the suits are amazing the suits are great yeah how many variations have you found so far uh well it's it's so basically you power up throughout the whole game. So I'm at like level, I think I'm on level 35 out of 50. And basically suits are unlocked as you go along. So you'll unlock this suit on level 12 or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm. So you get like XP points for story mode stuff and side missions, which I always went out of my way for side missions. So basically like a random civilian will scream mm -hmm. and like, ah, I'm being attacked. And they... <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I'm, being uh, I'm being attacked. Please help Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider please. Um, Sir, please. So you, you go and help him, and then you earn tokens, which help you buy upgrades mm -hmm. and uh, suits. Uh, so far, my favorite suit in the game is the big-time Spider-Man, which is the one with the green glowing one. Although the noir Spider-Man costume is also there. That's off the bat, and I use that one a lot for stealth missions. That, 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 that's a red one, isn't it? What, what, no, no, what, it's a black it? one. Oh, it's, it's completely oh, it's black. Completely it doesn't black. even have a Spider-Man symbol on it. Oh, okay. But it's, it, it's, it's just cool. a stealth suit. It feels kind of wrong, like, swinging around the city without, like, a Spider-Man symbol on you, but, like, but it, it, for it, stealth missions, it's very useful. It, it's, it's, uh, does it just completely, you know, silence It, it gives steps. you a suit power where, uh, basically, if you attack a, uh, enemy, sorry, um, where you attack an enemy, and there's another one right next to them. They can't alert the um, people around them, like, showing your position. Like, they're silenced. Oh, okay. So you can use that as your advantage. And you can you can switch that power with any of the suits. It's not just to that suit. I just like the noir look to it. Yeah. Um, and then it also has the three movie versions as Spider-Man Homecoming, the Tony Stark one. And if you collect all the Bat... Or, not Batman. Uh, Batpack tokens that are all around the city. Uh, you get the prototype Spider-Man outfit, which is like his homemade one with the hoodie and the cheesy goggles. Oh, or whatever. yeah, yeah. And uh, Homecoming. It, does it come with the Red Hood too? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, speaking of Red Hood. <laughs> um... Oh, but to wrap things up, Sp <laughs> Spider-Man. Damn it, you fucked up my segue. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Spider-Man is actually a really good game. You should definitely buy it. Um, yeah, I bet. Yeah. I, I, oh, and there's uh, tons to do. Like, I haven't even started the side missions. There's, there's like 11 of them. Yeah, it looks really, uh, from what I've seen, it looks really fun. And, and there's I, DLC coming up, so stay in tune. I can't, I can't. And great costumes. Yeah, it looks, it looks great, and I can't wait to play it. But yes, now that my segue is ruined, I guess we'll look at it on the back yeah, there. Yeah, no problem, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Red Hood. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh,. So, on this show, I've criticized Red Hood a lot because I, I don't hate the character. I hate what, um, what certain creators are doing to them. So, like, 
every solo there's only been like three including this one uh solo red hood uh comic series besides under the red hood which is more of a mini series well it's more of a batman book um but each one of them has him on a team and like red hood and the outlaws the new 52 version was god awful it was terrible uh this new one was just hokey and garbage and what i like from my red hood is that he's vengeful and he's he's essentially a bastard he's you know just out there for blood and he hates batman he doesn't he's not part of the bat family he doesn't help out with the bat family he's spiteful of batman because he didn't kill joker when he died, so you you don't you don't like you don't like as much the anti. I basically want you don't, him. You don't like them as much the anti-hero aspect of him. You like him being I like more a, leaning toward a, a villain, aggressive villain, yes, and, or, and, or at least more overly aggressive anti-hero. Yeah, I want him basically Punisher, but with Batman move sets and on <laughs> a whiny little bitch. I'll, I'll block it out. It's fine. So basically, Deathstroke. Uh, yeah, but not like. He's not like a listed contract killer and he's not overly smart. He just like likes his his sort of motive is to kill criminals cuz they don't deserve to live. Kind of like, he's essentially a punisher. Well ki- kind of well actually the from what I've seen from Red Hood, he's more like a controller like a one of the a, a liaison in a way cuz he cuz cuz that's that uh, he he That's somewhat true. He looks he looks he's from what and this is coming from a little bit of the comics and the movie. From what it see and mind you he's way more aggressive in the comics than you saw how aggressive he was you know, in the movie. Yeah. But but from what I see it looks as if he's more of a you know I I we can't stop crime but we can definitely control it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whoever doesn't he, listen to me, I will slaughter. He's like that, but he's not to that extreme. He's mostly just like he sees a bunch of criminals. He's like, well, you're dead. Bye. Um, or if, if he has something he can gain has, from them, he'll just... He has a lot more like a street kind of outfit now. It's like a... It's basically just a hoodie, whereas like the New 52 has all this like armor and oh, stuff. Does it, does it have Converse? No, it does not have Converse. <laughs> I, I, if you ha- if you are a consistent listener to us, you'll know what I'm talking about. Red Hood, it's <sighs> worst idea in the history of the planet. Um, but where was I? Yeah. So in this issue, basically, there's a cop that just got shot by these uh, motorcycle gangs, right. and he just goes off on it. Like he kills them in brutal ways, and then like afterwards, he tracks them down and then destroys their whole operation. And that's the Red Hood I like, where he's just solo and he's just there to defeat crime. He doesn't have Bizarro on his team. He doesn't have Starfire or yeah, yeah. Arsenal. More, like more, he's, I like him when he's solo and when he's serious. Like a and pu- angry. like a Punisher, like a Punisher. Basically, not yeah. like a jokey. Oh, I'm a t- uh, basically another Dick Grayson. We already have a Dick Grayson. We don't need that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like. Uh, I'm not gonna. But mind you, I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't like him being included in the Bat Family. But I did not like how they included him in the Bat Family. They included. Also, him. they always just ignore him in the Bat. He's almost like just there, just because he was a Robin. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. I don't think I don't see any sense in. Batman letting him into the Bat family knowing he still uses first of all he still uses lethal uh yeah he uses weapons. lethal he force he uses the lethal force that's, that's like, his kind of shtick yeah like I feel like he would still be exiled from the unless he had a change of attitude which I would be stupid yeah, if he honestly, did honestly I would love them to do an like a Batman event um with the whole Bat family where it's just Red Hood and he's finally like like antagonizing Batman more so like yeah. you could do like tie in issues to that but it's like one whole big event where everyone you know has their own kind of take cause like before he came back to life like Jason Todd was more of a legend or whatever like well not a legend but like more of this like oh yeah Batman's Robin died and you know this is what happened to him you know like Tim Drake had to deal with that Damien had to deal with well not so much because he came alive or Jason came alive then but like each individual's books has to like deal with their perception of jason todd and his legacy Mm. um and that would be really interesting to me and how jason todd would like you know dismantle them one by one you know what i mean just to prove to batman that he's nothing 
without a Robin and how he let him die and yada yeah. yada yada. I mean, they, they, he shouldn't like Batman. He shouldn't be a part of Batman's team. He should absolutely despise him. Yeah, and, and I the the one thing I did like like it, especially in the Red Hood movie was the uh, scene where they kind of where Red Hood where Red Hood was like basically he was fighting those uh, assassins and he knew Batman was coming and they and the, for for a second they were fighting like you know their old selves they were fighting like they were Batman and Robin again yeah 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 and then it's like a big back to reality where Red Hood takes a taser sticks it in the freaking guy's face and electrocutes him till his face explodes he he kills the guy and yeah. and you and there's a snap to the reality of Red Hood is not someone who can work with Batman because he's just too much of a polar opposite to Batman. No, yeah, I agree. Um, so I like what this new writer, I wish I remembered his name, um, this new writer is doing with Red Hood. I think it's solid, and I'm actually going to constantly pick it up because I think it's finally we're getting a solo Red Hood thing instead of him being on a freaking team. <sighs> Yeah, well, but uh, speaking of solo series, Iron Fist Season 2 has uh, come out, and our own um, gentleman Snark has Hi. watched the whole thing. And I have he's, not seen a single thing. I it. have not either, but I've heard some great things and some bad things. Let's let's hear what Snark has to say. Snark? Hi. Yeah, been quiet. Um. All right, so for starters, Iron Fist 2, let's just get this out of the way. It is a drastic step up from season one. No one will deny that. It, the choreography is a million times better. The story is a bit interesting, a lot better than what they did in season one. They seem to be following the whole route between, like, the villains are kind of running the show here. However, they fixed the Luke Cage problem where in Luke Cage season two, it was the villains running the show and Luke Cage was just kind of in the background character wise. But in this one, in my opinion, you see just as much of Danny's character as much as Davos because since they grew up together, you see that dichotomy of where they differ. You get to see how Davos' childhood was, his interaction between his mother, and then you see how Danny was trying to learn to live with becoming the Iron Fist and dealing with having the power and whatnot. Spoilers, by the way. Spoilers, by the way. Do you guys care for spoilers at all? No. Not at all. Not I'm at probably all. Probably not even going to watch Okay. It. So, yeah, spoilers. Um. So, now that I said spoilers, let me just uh, put this out there. Uh, Colleen gets the Iron Fist power. Just going to put that out there. Uh, okay. Okay. So, what ended up... Well, because... Okay, let's be real. For those of you wondering, yes, Davos stole... Danny's powers of the dragon, the Iron Fist power. He stole it. Like you predicted? Pretty much. Like it was kind of obvious. He stole it, and, and to be honest, he was actually a lot better than Danny at using it. Like he was able to light up two hands, while Danny was only ever t able to light up one. So, uh, obvious thing there. The only thing is, you definitely see that Davos is too militant in a sense. Like it's kind of like power kind of corrupted him to the point where. At first, he was kind of an anti-hero type of deal, but I like how they did this where, yeah, he's a villain, yeah, he's a compelling villain, but you don't really want to root for him because at the end of the day, you notice that he's a villain. A good one at that, but he's a villain. You still want you like, you like still want to be on the good guy's side. Where in Luke Cage, to compare, a lot of people were on Bushmaster's side because, to quote him, Mariah had to burn. <laughs> but back to season two. Mariah Carey? Stokes. Oh, okay. Mariah Stokes. Okay. But yeah, in season two. Lame joke. A. Whatever. Season two, Iron Fist. It's drastically better. The choreography is a lot better. There are still. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even. No. You don't have to pretend. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you uh, all right go ahead so season two um it was it obviously was a million times better than season one which isn't saying much because season one was a piece of shit let's be honest here season two again they focused more on character in a sense now my only complaint to this is that 
I know how I said in our last show how we see Danny in Luke Cage season two and we see that he's a lot more grounded. A bit of an issue that I had with that is um in this season in season two, this obviously takes place after the events of Luke Cage. So the thing I didn't really like too much was that it felt as if Danny's character took a bit of a back seat because while in Luke Cage he was like, You need to be grounded, you need to find your center more. In this one, we see Danny making similar mistakes he did in season one, where he's over emotional again, he's going in headstrong. He even said to a point where he might be obsessed with the Iron Fist power and he doesn't believe he should have it. He tried to make Colleen get it instead to take it over for him, blah, blah, blah. It's it's kind of really a back and forth with Danny's character, and it's a little bit annoying. And if it was honestly, if it wasn't for the action and the compel and the other compelling characters, I probably would have been tired of it. But it was it didn't spend t- it didn't spend too much time there, so that was fine. Another thing that they fixed is that in season one they spent way too much time with the Meachams and the whole litigation bullshit that no one really cared for. In this one. They trimmed that down, especially since this was 10 episodes instead of the usual 13. They trimmed that down. We do see the, see the interaction between the Meachums, especially Ward and the other one whose name the escapes me. They're trying to make up for past, but she's not really into it because, oh, you lied about my father up and down. In my personal opinion, while it was paced a lot better, I still didn't care for it because in my honest opinion, she was kind of being a whiny bitch because she's complaining how gentleman snark she was complaining about how ward never told her about her father was alive but gentleman snark Snark. that is no way to address a lady go 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 to the corner go to the corner i'm the new host now (laughs) that's a good joke (laughs) you you would have thought (laughs) that's a good joke but yeah, two no, more semesters, folks. But yeah, the whole <laughs> argument Unless you the die. Two, it was kind of a little bit <laughs> ridiculous. Like I understand her point of view, where oh, you lied to me all these years and whatnot. But I mean, one, she was more mad. She was also mad at Danny, which, to be fair, Danny was kind of just coming into that. So if anything, he's Danny a phantom. Should, should get the least of her wrath, <laughs> and Ward should get the most of it because he lied longer. <laughs> Second, for revenge, she decided to get at Danny by he's just getting 14. Typhoid <laughs> Mary. To kidnap Danny and to pretty much steal his powers and he's leave gonna him for dead. He's the phantom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Say that last part again. <laughs> he's gonna catch him all because he's Danny Phantom. Phantom, 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 Phantom. So to wrap up my opinions on IFS season two, um, <laughs> decent watch, a lot better. If for those of you who have not seen season one. I'm just gonna tell you right now, you don't really need to watch it. Just watch a recap thing on YouTube or something like that. Well, they'll get they'll provide a recap for you at the in the at the beginning. That's what they always do with the series, don't? Yeah, they? don't don't they have a separate like? Uh, yeah, recap they did that episode? for Punisher. They did that for Daredevil. Yeah, I think so. What do you mean? What do you mean by recap? So they do, and in the first episode or whatever, they they do like a recap. Previously on. Pre- yeah, they do. They what? They, they didn't do that for that? Wow, that's weird. That was weird. Guessing, they don't even, like, I know HBO has, like, little recap they, episodes where it just recaps the whole I'm entire thing. I'm guessing they gave it the Green Lantern treatment where they wanted to stay as far away from season one as possible. <sighs> okay, well. Because, again, season one was a The train Green ride. Lantern treatment? So, yeah. So, yeah, they didn't really okay. do that. Just watch a recap on YouTube. You'll be up to speed. Like, I found one that was, like, about 48 minutes. That's really all you need to know about it. Again, Iron Fist Season 2, it was a fun ride. It had a bit of its hiccups, like some of the plot things, like there's one thing where Colleen finds a group of kids or like street urchins living on the street, and she provided them with, oh, come to this homeless shelter, we'll provide you with food and shelter. And they said, no, we'll live on our own. And then Davos just comes in out of nowhere, provides them the same thing, and then all of a sudden they're just like, yeah, we're going to hang out with Davos instead. Made no sense to the point where even in the story they kind of called out to it because when Colleen found about it, she was like, what the hell, I offered you guys the same thing, but you went with him and not me. Made absolutely no fucking sense to me. Eh. Eh. But, yeah, overall, the f- again, fight choreography, I can't get enough of it. It was really amazing. Um, I also got to say that as much as compelling as Davos was the character, I got to say, him as the Iron Fist was kind of (laughs) lame mainly because it's pretty much because there's i don't understand davos's argument davos always complained that danny didn't deserve the iron fist even though he kind of did beat him in single combat like he earned it as a matter of fact 
Danny beat him in the in Kung Lun when they first fought for the Iron Fist. He beat him in season one again when they were fought, when he was trying to fight him to get bring him back. Another to one. And guess what? He beat him again in this season when he had both the when Davos had both the Iron Fist lit up and Danny still beat his ass. So at this point, Davos is just really being a salty bitch at this point. He is salty how? Um, uh, they didn't. Um, again, I already said spoilers, but yeah, they didn't kill Davos. So I expect no. to see Davos again. Will he steal back the uh, the Iron Fist power, or will he find another way to become an immortal we- uh, a mortal weapon? Um, a thing that I'm a little bit iffy on, because at first I did not like the idea of having Colleen to have the Iron Fist power. I did not like that idea at first, but then it kind of grew on me when I saw the cheese sword. The thing that I did think was a bit of um, a bit of a stretch was they had this whole thing where we see glimpse of Colleen's backstory, her family, her crest, her like family uh, crest and whatnot. And towards the end of the season, when the box broke containing her family history, we see the other side of that coin where it had like two like swan or cranes or whatnot. We see the other side of that coin. We see an iron fist symbol, which <gasps> yeah, it's supposed to show that. She was. She's actually related to the first female Iron Fist, which I thought was a huge fucking stretch on my that part. Is, that is. That sounds like an incredible stretch. That <laughs> is an incredible stretch. Yeah, that was a very huge stretch, and I didn't really like that very much. I did like how in the ending it showed that both Ward and Danny they go off into Asia because Danny says that in order for him to really use the Iron Fist power, he needs to understand the history of it. So he goes to Asia to kind of learn. Meanwhile, Colleen is back in New York protecting it with the Iron Fist power. One thing I need an explanation on that I hope they touch on in Season 3 because I need it is that... So like I told you guys, Colleen has the Iron Fist power now. But the issue with that is that in the end, after a month later, we see that they're trying to get in contact with Orson Randall, which if you remember in the comics, he was also a previous Iron Fist that took the book containing the history of the Iron Fist. They're trying to get in contact with him. And when they try to shoot a gun at Danny, Danny takes a gun, two guns actually, and shoots chi bullets. Like both his hands All lit right. up and no. shot chi bullets. No. So. No. Well, it was in the comics, so I, don't get no. me wrong. When I saw it, it was hype as fuck when I saw it. I loved it. But at the end of the day, when the credits rolled, I went. I had to go back into logic mode and be like, how is was he able to do that? If Colleen has the power of the Iron Fist, like what's going on? We need we need some sort of explanation there. So, season three got a lot of explaining to do. Season two, for what it was, like just to conclude, season two for what it was, it was a fun ride, way better than season one. I can't stress that enough. But again, it did have some faults. It did have some issues that they really need to explain, and I hope they do in season three. If anything. They did make the hype for season three a little bit real because a lot of people are going to want to know, okay, how was he able to do that? What did he learn? What type of stuff did he do in Asia? So, yeah, again, season three, I give it. I'll give it. You mean season two? Yeah, season two, my bad. Season two of Iron Fist, I'll give it a 3.5 to a four out of five. Again, wow. It did. Because it did, a, it fixed a lot of the issues from season one. But like I said, it still has a. But that do, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a better show. Well, no, I still stand by that. Daredevil is the best Netflix series. I uh, still stand by that. I think Punisher. Is I think best. Punisher is too. Okay, before Punisher, Daredevil was the best. Oh yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. There, well, honestly, now. either way, they're the two best currently on the on yeah, the. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I still stand. By I will, that. I will, I will pick either the of them over Luke of... Cage or Iron Fist, the or first... especially uh, uh, Jessica Jones. Actually, hold up. L- not only you bring that up, I know, I know we have another thing to get to, but since we're on unpopular opinions, this is a perfect segue. Well, speaking of unpopular unpopular opinions, serious as sheep, you, you you put Jessica Jones on your top three in Netflix series. Why? Explain. Well, first off, let me say it's not good. It's bad, in fact. It doesn't portray the Jessica Jones character in the slightest accurately to the comic books. Um, she's more bitchy in this one, uh, in, in the Netflix show, than she... She's a little bitchy in the comic books, but it comes from, like, a good place, whereas this one, she's just, like, a straight-up bitch. Um, I was intrigued by the crime, true crime-type 
story and I liked the villain. Um, but besides that, that's about it. And I don't like any of the other Netflix shows. I just want to put that out there except for Daredevil and uh, Punisher. Like Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Defenders, they're all trash to me. Including Jessica Jones, but she just makes it into my top three just because I liked it slightly better than the rest of them. All right, so my unpopular... Uh, also, I've only seen season one, not season two. Oh, okay. Season two ain't that much better. All right. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. So, an unpopular opinion I have is in reference to the White Knight. Fuck you both. <laughs> <laughs> There's um. You weren't too much black for this one. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, White Knight, great comic series. I loved it. It's a great standalone series. My only unpopular opinion about it would be probably I did not like the ending. I did not like how weak the ending is. I thought it was very anticlimactic. I thought they built up all this momentum just to have it just fall off a cliff. So that's just my um, that's just that's my view on the ending. I mean, Sinister Shape. You, you yeah. You, I what what do you think? I really like the series. I like the miniseries, and hopefully they never do a sequel to it because it's just good as it is standalone. Uh, kind of like the Dark Knight Returns, uh, and making a sequel would just ruin it. But yeah, the the ending's not so great. But the whole rest of the issues, like issue after issue, I was excited. I was thrilling. I especially I like how you mentioned um, earlier on um, the Harley Quinn. How what they did with the original Harley Quinn, Quinn and the new Harley Quinn was really well integrated. And uh, Sean Murphy is a great artist and uh, um, writer. So. It's overall very good, very solid. Ending's a little shaking, but if you're looking for an Elseworld type Batman story and it's in trade, pick it up. It's good. And it's political, but it's not like bashing it over your head. It's not like you're an idiot. Like it distributes equal blame to both parties. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right. I got an unpopular opinion with anime, and I was talking. I'll do it about this with Sinister Sheep before. I think Dragon Ball, the entire series, is one of, not the worst, just one of the worst written animes, story-wise. The original Dragon Ball. Like, just Dragon Ball in general, like the entire franchise. Like, oh, Actually, you know what? I'll spare Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball Z onward, worse, one of the worst written animes, in my honest opinion. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Wh- which one, I'm sorry? Well, it's like... okay, it's Dragon Ball Z up to Super and then maybe GT as well. So I'm going to compare Dragon Ball to something... Dragon Ball Story to something people might not agree with. It's like the McDonald's of anime. It's there if you want it. It's there if you don't. It's kind of garbage, but it's there. Like, let's be You honest. can always choose to ignore it or you can choose to accept it. This is pretty much what Dragon Ball Z but is. But Dragon Ball Z is it's wrestling, basically. It's action porn. It's yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's absolutely action porn. action porn. That's all it is. One hundred percent. Oh, um, but okay, so I bl- I, bl- I believe um uh, honestly, yeah, you know, it, it is action porn in a way. Mind you, I think it, it it's held personally I think it's held its own st- its own kind of flow stylistically. I think that's what's driven it. It, 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 mind you, it's it's kind of very, it's kind of I see it as the Hulk of anime in the sense of, it's like smash, smash, smash. Yeah. Little story, Hulk smash, smash more. Yeah. Want to get stronger, sm- that kind and of thing. And it's the same type of story too. <laughs> yeah. And well, Goku will always win, and Gohan will never get his. I did. Well, here's the thing. Goku with Beerus did not win, at least at first. Well, I bad. thought that was pretty cool that he actually lost this time. But anyway, um, just oh, and one more thing, Vegeta is the best written character. Vegeta is Vegeta the best is written. yep yep yep. He is the best character. He has opinion. the best conflict internally and externally. Kakarot. But um, Kakarot. And here's the thing: the moments he has, like the funny moments or the sensitive moments he has, are just that worth it. Yeah. As you the go best. through the series, the the small ones you can count on probably one hand for like one season. You, they're worth it. They're they're best. Uh, they're they're written out really well because of how the develop the characters developed. Now, on to our next popular opinion, which is going to be from. Uh, Actually, I sp- you 
Hold your tongue. Okay. It's going to be from a special guest. Um, Spiral Lover 99. <laughs> Um. P- uh. Please welcome Spiral Lover ninety nine. Oh my god. Okay. I actually really like the arrow. Um. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I know you hate it, but I really like the show. I think it's well done in certain seasons, and then in other seasons, it's absolutely not. I didn't like the. I like the newer season, season six, I believe, but I didn't like season five at all, actually, um, because, uh, can I go into spoilers, or? Yeah, yeah, spoiler okay. alert, guys. Oh, okay, um. Okay, no one cares about the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. My but, mom, um, my mom does. I like the way it ends, <laughs> because it ends with, um, with Oliver Queen, um, in jail, Actually, he got put in jail, and I think that's a really good. Um, I I think that's a really good way to start the next season. I hated when they they did get political with a couple of things, and I hated that just because it was too much in the show. Like um, with gun laws and stuff like uh, that. Oh. Yeah, and I hated that, and then I also hated the season. I forget which season it was. Um, when they brought in like a group of five other people that didn't need to be there okay. like um i completely forget their names because i hated it so much but um i i liked when it was specifically like uh john diggle uh felicity smoke uh oliver queen uh roy harper when he was there when he left i liked it when the uh queen came in and on, on oliver's sister uh dairy queen but yeah i actually liked that aspect of it i hated though because they just then once they brought it in and stuff like that they just drowned out the character and oliver became this like not that he didn't have trust issues before but it became like overpowering and i just hated it it because it became more it was harder to follow no not harder to follow it was just became more of a I think it became more of a drama series than than oh, an action, and okay. I hated that. Because that sounded like it was turning into more of like a Justice League kind of thing than. I also hated the villain Damian Dark, Damian which is Dark. unpopular yeah. because typically. Uh, Everybody loves him. Yeah, yeah. I liked uh, Malcolm Merlin mm-hmm. as the villain, and oh, I yeah. also liked. Uh, Merlin's great. Uh, who else was there? Oh, oh um, death, the death stroke. stroke? Yeah, I liked him as that, well. That that Deathstroke w- is pretty good. Deathstroke. I like the costume. Uh, for honestly, the yeah, it, it's a little bit bulkier, but it it moves nicely. It's it's, it's yeah, a very. I like a bulky Deathstroke. Yeah, I, I, yeah, a, a very. Uh, it it shows. Uh, he he's strong, but it also shows he has a lot of agility, especially when he's moving in the suit, which is pretty cool. I also really liked uh, Ray, Raz Al Ghul and Talia. Al Ghul when they added them into the mm. show. I really like that aspect of it. I didn't like it though when it went um, from so basically it started out whereas um, Oliver Queen basically he was trained by him. It kind of followed like a Batman, Bruce Wayne type scenario. It basically copied that for a while. Um, Rich then, Playboy. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, that's how that's how his arc originally was. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oliver Queen, like he was actually what hack. Here's here's the stupid way how he got his originally how he got his skill. He was literally on a fucking party boat getting wasted. He fell off the party boat. He fell off the yacht, and like nobody realized he fell off because they were just like drunk and partying too hard. He washed up on an island, island. Yeah, and then he... That's what uh, season one takes place of. Oh, yeah, and then he and then he learns... that, that, that That's the original story arc, though, and then he learns how to... Green Arrow year one, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of that, that how, how that went originally, which, uh, I mean, honestly, the party yacht thing, that, it's a big stretch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big stretch. stretch. It, it, it doesn't seem well written, but, like, I mean, it was... It looked cool on the screen, but it just wasn't. It's it, it's uh, to me that's bad writing. 
I thought the I I thought it looked really well done. No, it um, lo- it, lo- like it looked one. it looked what? good. I'm not saying it looked good. I just think it was just bad writing uh, in general. Not even not even bad writing for the directors. I'm talking about just even back in the the, the comic books. It's just bad writing for his uh, origin. It's a bad origin. All right, so let's Sinister Sheep talk now uh, about Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> This show, the show. This yes, I did with you, Spyro lover. Okay. <laughs> this show does not portray Oliver Queen, Queen, in, Queen, <laughs> in the slightest accurately. First off, Green Accuracy. Arrow kills people. <laughs> Green Arrow doesn't kill people. He Just in general, he did kill people. Um, later on in the season. So no, I'm did. talking about it in the comic book, sweetie. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> In the comic books, he doesn't kill. And he's funny and he quips. He's basically like Spider-Man but with the arrows, right? And he's cool and he's got a cool mustache. He has a cool mustache. He doesn't have a dumbass hood. And he's just overall better. Like this one feels more like a Batman with with arrows. He's all brooding and stuff. He's not fun. The way you do Green Lantern. Green Arrow. <laughs> couldn't even do this. <laughs> Green Arrow. Just look at the Justice League cartoon. That is exactly how you portray Green Arrow. We don't need another Batman. All right, in the DC, we already have plenty of Batmans. They Batman Superman. They Batman Green Arrow. What else are they gonna do? You know. I so gotta... just do Green Arrow and have him be fun. I got. And not kill people. I gotta agree with Sinister Sheep. And also at the boxing glove. Arrow. Okay, one, yes, they need to have that. That's an iconic thing with Green Arrow. Two, I got to side with Sinister Sheep because that's what turned me off from the Arrow series. They basically turned him into Batman, and I'm like, Green Arrow is not Batman. What are y'all doing? Okay, so I think what they did was they... From what I see, it looked like they were trying to capitalize on the hype that's going on with Batman right now. Mm-hmm. Um, with giving him more of a Batman-like origin, and they're, and uh, and as far as his appearance, they tried to make him look more aesthetically pleasing for like a modern Green Arrow, like as like all you know, all the women's go, the women's go Gaga every time they don't look at me, the Spiral yeah, Lover, the like it's not lover. true. No, it's we all know. Pause every time there's an ab scene. Yeah, I do not. You do every I time do he's not. working out and sweating. You just pause. No, I Every don't. time he gets out of it, I can take a picture okay. of it. Okay, sure. Okay, you told fine. me you wanted what to eat cake, cake off its abs. I <laughs> did not tell you that. Okay. Well, do do you? That's not a refusal. That's not. A, that's not a refusal. He might. He might listen to this. He no. might let you eat cake off his no, abs. No, I'm good. You sure? Really? If he if he walked in right now and said, "Hey, you want to eat cake off my abs?" And he gave you permission. He shoots me with an arrow and kills me because <laughs> apparently that's what he does now. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm not sore about it, though. In all actuality, he is. Um, they tried to make him, I think, more aesthetically, modernly aesthetically pleasing. They tried to make him dark. Don't make him dark. Well, they tried to make him dark. Uh, they, they Again, I think it's two halves. It's the Batman part, and then there's the. I mean, they, they freaking. But they, they put... when this came out, um, mm. when it first originally came out, mm. the, it coincided with the Flash, and the Flash was supposed to be the silly funny character and then they're both silly funny characters yeah and i think that's why they took green arrow in a weird different direction right but they weren't originally they weren't originally (laughs) planning to do like a flash show they didn't even know if arrow was going to succeed and then when arrow succeeded they're like all right what other superhero properties can we use and they chose the flash and they portrayed the flash flash uh fairly well i like the flash character but like as far as arrow arrow is not no. Arrow isn't no. accurate to the comic ones. Uh, again, that this is They should kill off this one and then just replace it. Oh, I'm the new Oliver I don't think Queen. they I don't think they should kill him off. I think well, okay, the only out I see for them for it, him being not th- uh, being this aesthetically pleasing asshole is the only thing I see they can really do is th- this this Arrow is pretty young. Make it so yeah. when now he's when he's middle-aged which, which he you has know, a better sense of he, humor. Well, he's blonde <laughs> and with a mustache. Yeah. Legally, he, well, what, as he gets wiser, he'll get funny. Uh, that that's what I think. I I think the best because right now he's serious because he's in this like 
dark young stage. He's basically in an emo phase right now. Yeah. He's so a, I've seen this Linkin Park it, phase right, right now, now. If they treat him like he's in an emo phase and they he gets out of this emo phase, they have a chance at saving. Well, Sinister Seep's opinion. <laughs> they have they have <laughs> they have a chance at saving more of the more of the. Having more of the kind of original, you know, arrowheads. <laughs> I call I call his fans arrowheads. <laughs> uh, That's very funny. Um, the more the arrowheads like kind of go toward, go 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 back toward the show. But right now, it's just this is just they're portraying a completely different arrow than what we we're, we're used to, and that's what I think. That's probably what's turning us off to it. But now both um, Barry Allen mm -hmm. and uh, Oliver Queen are like dead serious. Quick question. That's um, terrible. Okay, one, that's bad. Two. Well, they're not like, they didn't portray him like Batman serious, but they lost his humor in. Oh, so they, so they lost. Was Black the... Canary in this? Is, was Black yes. Canary shown yet? Okay. In the arrow, not in. Flash. Yeah. Why? No, I was just kind of curious because that's... Also, that's Supergirl is terrible. Yes! This is Supergirl fact. is one of the worst shows. This is fact. Superhero show. I actually haven't seen it that. It pushes such a heavy political agenda. It's like... Yes, it does. It's not even subtle. And I like... I also like the character of Martian Manhunter. And I like seeing him on the screen. But, like, I, I don't want to watch Supergirl to see him. The first one... The first season was all right. The second season was like a... Like, that was terrible. I, the, I, the first season had, no. uh, to me, it just had no momentum at all. No. And it was hokey. It was CW. Like, a lot of these CW shows are very hokey in their humor. It's like, well, this is awkward kind of well, thing. Keep in like, mind, sitcom -y, And I, I, mind, I just don't like that. This is on cable television. So they kind True, of but. Yeah. I, 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 here's the thing. I actually. Did you guys watch Smallville? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy. I can tell you. On it. I can tell To be honest, I. Smallville wasn't even the best series no. out there by far, but I enjoyed it way more today than I did Supergirl because th at least Smallville had some kind of momentum. Even that's not even a Netflix series. It it it's like an older series. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it, one of the first superhero shows. I but yeah, but I think that's what they tried. Um, yeah, Constantine was. Constantine was Constantine is actually a good yes, CW it was. show, and they canceled they it, of course. It. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sucked. I actually, I start, it was very you know, accurate. I actually, I started watching. I well, not as dark, but I watched so. the first. I watched a bit of it with my mom, and like my mom and I like loved it. You know, um, my mom. The character's great. My mom, uh, mother flag. <laughs> mother flag. <laughs> She's from Soviet Russia. Yeah. You don't know what her races are, <laughs> viewer. <laughs> I'm a Portuguese man. I am um black. Snark. Okay, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm ja I'm Jamaican. Jamaican be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican be crazy. <laughs> uh, and it's still uh, funny. Gentleman Snark no, is not. a Jew. Sure, let's go with that. Aloha. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. His Hebrew name is. <laughs> well, you have to edit that out. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but all right. Uh, so what about some video game unpopular opinions? Okay, so some video game unpopular opinions. Um, Ocarina of Time is not the best video game. It of is all not. Time. Nope, nope, nope. Not it's by long It's not. Time. There's been so many other future developments of games and stories and stuff like that. For its time, it's a yes, classic. It's, it's a good. classic. There's no, yeah, there's it, no doubting it's a classic. It's a way like how uh, uh, Citizen Kane is viewed as like one of the best movies of all time. It's good, but it. It's 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 a great. It's like a classic, but it's not the best movie ever made by far. Um, also, with Ocarina of Time, like the combat is kind of shaky now, and it's like for its time, it's good, but it, holding. It's a lot of. If you ever saw Eco Raptors review on it or whatever with his um, series that he did, he compared it to waiting attack, mm -hmm. waiting attack, which creates the illusion of. Do difficulty but it's actually not difficult at all mm -hmm. kind of thing I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna be devil's advocate here and probably explain as to why ocarina of time might be the best and i told this to sinister sheet before but i feel like the main reason why people are jumping on that why ocarina of time is the best game ever even though i agree that it's not is that it had elements of time travel and at the time that was like 
that was one of the best games. That was like one of like video games was not that popular at that time. It was nowhere near as popular as it is now. So clearly, introducing such a complicated story element such as time travel and doing it so well made it seem really good. Especially when now in video games, when you add the element of time travel, it shits on itself. Sonic 06 is the best oh, yeah. example of that. Yeah, yeah, Sonic 06. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. Show off. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, Doing your white boy antics. Or, sorry, black guy antics. <laughs> that Jama- Jamaican. Jamaican. Antics. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm screwing it up. I'm sorry. My privilege is showing. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Okay, mind you, they had one of the, as I just played. Uh, they just they had Great a very, soundtrack. very iconic soundtrack. Very iconic um, MIDI score. But I'm going to have to say that Ocarina of Time, the playability... I mean, though it's a classic. Nobody can lie that it's, and say it's not a classic. It's not the most... It's not the best or most playable game out there. I say... There. No, I can't say that. All right. It's, it's a, a joke, but um, Skyward Sword is better. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my, okay, so my unpopular opinion about video games is... So... I personally do not believe. Jesus. Okay, I'm going. I, I'm. I'm probably all the all the uh, God of War fans, the diehard God of War fans, are gonna hurt me for this. But I actually enjoyed the new God of no. War. No. Like okay. Dad of War. No, listen, Dad of War is listen, not listen, good. Listen, listen, Dad of War is not good. Listen, listen. It's Last of Us with hold on, painted hold on, let's with... He, let's hear his explanation. All right, fine. No, 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 okay. Like, wrong, but fine. <laughs> like, you're entitled to your opinion, and if you think it's right, it's right, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm not going to tell you that, sit here and say it was better than the other games, because that's not, that's just plain not true. It is not true. But... It has qualities about it in the sense that y- you're right. It is basically Last of Us with you know, God of War. Skin. The God of War. I the combat's terrible I can't, too. I can't, okay, I disagree. The com- uh-huh. okay. So check it out. The combat. Sorry, I'll let you finish your point, but let me just get this out a little way. Okay. So in order to see enemies behind you. They have a circle around you with arrows pointing to it. A game should just let you naturally know when an enemy is behind you. It shouldn't have to point to the enemy like, it's right there. It's coming right toward you. No. You should just know naturally. Well, that's due to the the uh, point of view they made it. They right. But it's person. but that's their fault for Which doing that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They should have done... Anytime there's a fighting scene, there's no shame in just pulling the camera back and having it be the classic God of War style. Okay, I don't... Okay. It does not work. It makes it feel clunky and cramped. Okay, I didn't... I didn't. The l- gameplay is cramped. I didn't like that part, but the combat, the actual combat sequences, though they were a little bit dull, I thought they were pretty well made, and I thought, um... I thought the weapons, w- besides the fucking shield, <gasps> were... The shield's annoying. Yeah, the shield is very annoying, but otherwise, the weapons are pretty good. The enemies look pretty good. Even, um, uh, and I pers- also, I really liked, uh, one of my favorite parts of this game was, uh, <laughs> this is stupid because this is a complete homage to, the, to the la- all the other games, when he got his, uh, his signature twin blades out of the freaking floorboards. Uh, blades of Chaos. The Blades of Chaos. Yeah. And you were able to actually play a little bit like the other games. That that was a pretty... I mean, it was a very little bit. A very yeah. little bit. I But here's the thing. For what it is, I appreciate it, and I I, I liked it for, for a certain... No. Uh, mind you, I didn't like the story as much because it was... Uh, it was, a lot it was too over dramatic. It was a lot of running around. It was a lot of running around. Uh, but I thought visually it was great. I thought I, I again. I'm sorry, but I have the unpopular opinion that I thought the combat was pretty okay. I, um, my, I personally, personally, I kind of like. I, I liked it. That, that's just mine. That's there's just me. There's one main thing about the God of War, of Dad of War that I did not like, which is a lot. Which is the main reason why I don't like modern video games very much, and. Sinister Sheep may agree with me on this one, but I hate the walking. Non-stop walking. Yeah, like for for Last of Us... And you can't even skip it. You have to walk. I hate that in any games. For Last of Us, that is especially... Like, it it makes sense in Last of Us because it's 
driving a narrative where it's like, all right, so God of War games should just be violent and mindless, and that's fine because that's what they are. The minute you incorporate, like Kratos is a bad person. He's terrible. And like, they're kind of just like last minute, just like in God of War 3, the ending, last minute, oh, but his power came from hope. No, this guy is a serious, he's killed children. He's pillaged villages. He's not a good person. And he should remain a violent psychopath because we have so few of those in video games that are just mindless, just bad guys, just terrible people. And you ruined that with this and having a s- stupid son named Loki or a boy, a if boy. you will. A boy. A boy. A boy. And the combat is not good. It's I genuinely think it's terrible. And I hate that how IGN is like 10 out of 10 masterpiece 10 out of 10 masterpiece like all these what that's because no. how it looks that's no. real that's yeah, how yeah. it looks that's I mean I get it why. I like the aesthetic that the camera never breaks not even once unless if you die obviously and how it's just one continuous shot as a cinematography nerd that's great and all but it's not used for a purpose mm. like I get it it's one continuous journey so therefore you can't break the shot but no uh uh-uh. uh that doesn't that doesn't fly with me it's it's lazy. I can't see it. What it's time? It's like 56. Okay. I'm wrap it up now. All right. So those are my thoughts on the new God of War, and I, I just I don't like it. No, it's okay. So um. You're okay. You're you're okay. All right. So um. Uh, I believe that should be it for this week's show here. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, hanging out with us and listening to uh, all these wonderful news and our unpopular opinions, which we might make a segment. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But as always, I am the Gentleman Snark. I'm Sinister Sheep. I'm Black Flag. You're a show, show off is what you off. So, um, is what you are. So, yeah, you can catch us on Saturdays at 9 p.m. to 10 on WXCI 91.7 FM. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and also a special thanks to our guest... Uh, Spyro Lover 99. You're welcome. 